Scary Mysteries Twisted Twos, Opedal House, and Richard Patrone Jr. and Danielle Imbo. Tales of hauntings, murder, and scary mysteries. Every week, Twisted Twos dives into a pair of uniquely terrifying true stories that are worthy of a more in-depth look. For this week, we focus on the murder at the Opedale House and the disappearance of Richard Patrone Jr. and Danielle Imbo. Get ready for Scary Mysteries, Twisted Twos. Number 1. Opedale House Stockton, California was built during the Californian Gold Rush. People flocked to the area, hoping to strike it rich. Because of its proximity to the coast, Stockton became a gateway to the Central Valley and beyond, offering access for transportation and trade, as well as reaching the southern gold mines. But Stockton has come a long way since then. The city today has a population of over 300,000, Unfortunately, with the growing population and economic crashes, though, parts of the city have spiraled into crime. In fact, many call it the Detroit of California. Criminal activities in the city has only increased over the years. In 2018, crime in Stockton was 2.1 times higher compared to the entire U.S. average. This included a rise in violent crimes. However, Stockton, even in decades past, was never a stranger to murder and crime. In January of 1977, 15-year-old Matthew Opdale decided to go on a rampage. The Tokay High School student brutally gunned down his family in their lavish Stockton, California home. Matthew shot both his sister, 13-year-old Carol, and 15-year-old Susan, multiple times in the head. Then he turned to his father, Dr. Daryl Opdale, and shot him. He was found with his back to the wall and bullet wounds to his chest. He also attacked his mother while she was in her bedroom. His two sisters were declared dead from the attack while his father and mother were rushed to the hospital. His father later died from his injuries. Only his mother, Patricia, survived the ordeal. Later that day, he called the sheriff's department and reported the shootings. He was kept on the phone until authorities arrived and then they arrested him. Matthew's rampage was a shock to the community and anyone that knew the boy. He was described by friends and relatives as a quiet kid, a good athlete who got good grades at school. Many of his friends, even those who took the bus with him that day, didn't report anything unusual with him. In fact, one of his friends described him as being in high spirits. A lot of people were shocked at the thought that a seemingly happy and normal kid would suddenly turn into a murderer. During the investigation, police said there were no signs of violence in the home prior to the attacks. The gun used by the teen was owned by Dr. Opedale. It was found at a downstairs bedroom and was used for hunting. Although Matthew was interviewed by a psychiatrist shortly after the attack, there is no information released about his mental state during the crime. Police are still baffled as to why he committed the murders. In the end, it's unclear what happened to Matthew afterward. Records online are divided on whether he was charged as an adult or if he even served prison time. His mother, who survived the attack, still lives in Stockton. The only real information about the case comes from an archived newspaper article covering the incident. Number 2. Richard Patrone Jr. and Danielle Imbo It was February 19, 2006, when friends Danielle Imbo and Richard Patrone Jr left a Philadelphia bar to head to Imbo's home in New Jersey. But instead of arriving home safely, the two never made it and were never seen or heard from again. Richard was 35 years old when he disappeared. He lived in South Philadelphia at the time and was a single father of a teenage girl. He worked full-time at his family's business, Vikings Pastries. Meanwhile, Danielle was a single mother who lived in southern New Jersey with her young son. She was working in the mortgage industry. The couple were in an on and off again relationship with one another. Imbo was estranged from her husband while Patron was already divorced. On the night they disappeared, both had been out with different groups, but later that evening they decided to meet up at the bar on Philadelphia's South Street. Witnesses saw them both leaving together using Patron's 2001 Dakota pickup truck. 
Richard planned to drop off Danielle at her home in Mount Laurel, a southern town in New Jersey, about a half an hour away. Richard was supposed to stay the night there before leaving in the morning for his apartment in Philadelphia in time to watch the Daytona 500. Authorities are unclear if the two even reached Danielle's apartment or not. All that's known is that after their last sighting, they were never heard from again. When concerned relatives reported them missing and the investigation began, police found there were no cell phone calls or activity from their phones at all. Their bank accounts were left untouched, including their credit cards. They simply appeared to vanish into thin air. Police looked into the possibility they disappeared on their own choice, but friends, family, and their backgrounds led them to believe this was unlikely. From the start of the investigation, authorities suspected foul play was involved. The first suspect that they looked into was Danielle's estranged husband, but they discovered he had a solid alibi and was seen by several people at a party. But there are still those who speculate the couple's disappearance might have been a murder-for-hire affair. Some also speculate they were a victim of a robbery or carjacking gone wrong. They may have taken one or more questionable and dangerous routes in Philadelphia and fell victim to a violent crime. Others say they may have been followed after exiting the bar or while they were walking towards Richard's car. There are also those who believe they may have veered off a road somewhere and wound up in one of the area rivers or creeks which would explain why the pickup truck has never been discovered either. Despite a thorough investigation, nothing has been resolved in the case. Danielle and Richard have been officially declared dead, even though there's still a reward in place for any answers as to what happened to the couple. Those with information about Danielle Imbo and Richard Patron Jr. can contact law enforcement, particularly the Philadelphia and New Jersey State Police. There are also anonymous tip lines available online. So there were two of the most vicious and mysterious stories around. The world can be a crazy place, and Twisted Twos is always sure to show you why. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please consider supporting us on Patreon and subscribe to our channel. We have new videos coming out every Wednesday and Saturday we know you'll want to check out. Thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.